How many times have you wanted pricing or availability on a tool or insert, and it takes days to get pricing and delivery and even availability in your inbox, and you have material sitting on the floor, or even worse, in a machine ready to go? What's up, guys? Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool, back here again for Practical Machinist. And today on Machine Shop Talk, we're going to be detailing a situation that has been a huge frustration to me and has likely been to a lot of you in the past before. But before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so as promised today, today's video is going to be on something that has hit rather close to home over the years. Um, if you've been in this trade for any length of time, or even if you're just an apprentice or getting into it, I'm sure you've experienced this before. As a small shop, um, you know, especially as a very small shop, you know, we have seven guys here and some of you guys I know are one-man shows or two-person shows or... You know, as a small shop, it can be very, very difficult to get tooling and especially the pricing and availability of that tooling in-house when you need it. I think, um, here's the situation. So let's say I want to try out X brand's tools, or even worse, let's say I'm running a job in one of my uh, machines, I break an insert or I, you know, smash one of my tool bodies, I have material on the floor, I need to get it going, I need to get a new insert. So first of all, I go on that company's website. I know it's company XYZ. I go look. Oh, great, this is a nice website. I can go through and I can see, I look up my insert. Oh, there's the insert. And some of these websites are beautiful. You know, they have catalogs. They have 3D models of the tooling. They have everything you need, except I go and I look for pricing. There's nothing there. And then I go, okay, well, maybe I need to just order it and they'll send me the quote. There's no order button. It's literally just the whole website is a catalog. So, okay, now I need to figure out who actually sells this brand or this insert or whatever in my area. So now I need to look vendors or distributors for this kind of tooling in my area. And I go look and you know what? Maybe there's two or three or maybe I'm really lucky and they even have a rep in my area. So I go on and I now need to email this person hey, I'm looking for X, Y, Z, can you give me pricing and availability? So I go on, and if you're really clever about this, I guess, if there's two vendors that sell this kind of insert or brand in my area, maybe I'll email them both. Maybe one guy has stock, maybe the other guy doesn't. Let's see. So now I wait, you know, sometimes this can take a day or two just to get pricing. I don't know why companies do this, and I think it's because we're a small account. We're not some giant factory where they're going to sell... I'm not looking for 10,000 of these. I'm looking for a pack of 10 inserts. So it takes them a day or sometimes two to get me pricing back. Sometimes I need to go back and forth with them four times because my code is different than their code because my tool body is a little older or maybe it's new, so on and so forth. So I get my two quotes back from the two suppliers. Well, one's 15% higher than the other, but this guy's got a two-week delivery. This guy's got a three-week delivery. So now I got to decide, well, which do I go for? So I write up a PO, I'm going to go for this one. Write up a PO, I send it off, and then they send me back a credit application. Hey, do you take Visa? I just want to buy these inserts. No, sorry, you have to da 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 da. Man, I just wanted to buy some inserts. I just have a machine sitting on the floor and it's dead. This is a problem that I have encountered more times than I can count, and it's something that I have abdicated for forever is for companies to be more transparent with pricing, uh, make it easier for people to order tools. You know, it's great. And I understand a lot of these companies are chasing the giant factories that are going to spend $100,000. But I feel like what a lot of these companies don't realize is the guys who are the one-man show or the guy working in a small shop on the floor, they may go to that big company and become the purchase, purchasing agent. And who are they going to want to work with? The giant companies that didn't give them the time of day or the guys who were there through them, for them throughout the entire journey. Fortunately, a new website has been brought to my attention, and I'm going to call it the Amazon of cutting tools. 
However, if you've actually tried to buy cutting tools on Amazon, I feel for you and you're probably not gonna make that mistake again. The company is called TechMet, and if you've heard of TechMet before, that's not by mistake. TechMet is the largest supplier of carbide blanks and cemented carbide to all the other tool manufacturers. So even if you don't know them specifically, the chances are you've used their stuff more times than you can count and just never known it. But they have a new website where you can actually go on, order online, see pricing online, get it shipped direct to your door quickly and easily. So we're gonna go check that out and see how it works. So we're gonna go on, and this is TechMax website. Looks pretty standard, but what we have here is a link that says shop. So when we hop on here, you can see, as I mentioned, they supply carbide blanks, they supply indexable cutting tools. They even send, uh, sell the grinding wheels. So if you produce your own carbide in-house, you know, if you uh, have a tool grinder, you can buy the stuff to make your own end mills right here. And you can see they have stuff on there with the flutes going straight through for uh, through spindle coolant. Interesting stuff. But for the purposes of what we're doing here, we're going to hop on indexable cutting tools. So you can see here they have turning inserts, notch grooving, lay down threading, high fee milling tools. So to start, let's go to turning inserts. So yeah, perfect. Let's go double sided turning inserts, negative rake. And you can see here, we use a ton of CNMG tooling here. So you can see they have all these different CNMG inserts here with all these different grades. And the one thing I should point out, we have pricing, we have in stock, whether you can get it you know, right away, and how many multiples you have to order in it. So let's say I want to get five of these CNMGs. I just pop in five here and hit add to cart. But you can see here, they have a bunch of different profiles. These are actually all pretty much CNMGs. But if you go through here, you can find a lot of options here. But the other thing I wanna look at here is the high feed milling tools. We actually just blew up one of our favorite high feed milling tools. One of the screws backed out on it, but wasn't a tech mat. And uh, yeah, you know, it kind of got smashed. So I want to look at one of those today. So you can see here, they have versions of these that go all the way up to five inch diameter. That thing is huge. But for what we're doing, we need to actually get a bit of reach into a part. So I'm going to look at this inch and a half high feed here. I'm going to click on the link, the part number. I can see how many flutes it takes. I can see, or how many inserts it takes. I can see the max reach, all the information I need on it. Over here on the side, there are all the parameters for running this tool. So I'm gonna add one of those to my cart. Again, pricing is right there in front of me. I add to cart. The next thing I need to buy are my inserts. So same thing, high feed milling inserts. The nice thing is, all these inserts for all these bodies are the exact same profile. So the only thing I need to choose are, you know, my chip breaker, my um, grade, what kind of stainless am I running? What kind of cast iron am I running? All those things. And if I look here when it says grade, it actually gives me recommendations for what this should be used for. So, you know, even if I'm doing super alloys like Hasselow or Inconel, they have a PVD grade for it. And those inserts are less than 10 bucks each, which is a very good deal. So let's choose some of these, add them to the cart. We're gonna take these down and we are going to run them. Let's take a look. So now we've got our tooling in house. So I ordered some CNMGs. These are from TechMet. They, ooh, we got our two different grades here. So regular old CNMG. Um, I can't remember which grade these are. These are the uh, GP1225 and I got the GM3225. Um, we have some tougher stuff we wanted to turn, so I wanted to try out some of their more difficult grades. But you can see, that's a CNMG with a nice chip breaker, double-sided. I got two edges, and I also have a tool that I can actually use this edge as well with a higher approach angle. So we're going to give those a shot in the lathe. And the other thing we got here is we got the high feed mill. And this thing is beautiful. It's a three insert or, you know, three flute. Big sturdy body, it does have through coolant on there. You can see those little holes in there, that's through coolant. And with these kind of tools guys, I know a lot of guys, when they get these tools, they say, oh man, I'm not gonna wanna hang it out that far. If you don't, I actually wanted the range on these because we have some bigger blocks we're gonna run these on. But if you don't want the range on these, I feel like 
you know, I've seen this enough, but in case you don't know, you can actually cut these off and turn them down in your lathe. So if I only want, you know, half this length, I can make it that length. That hole for the coolant goes all the way through. So that's our body. And then the other thing we have here are the inserts. These are their high feed inserts. You can see that they are four edge on them. They look very, very nice to me. We're going to give them a shot and see how they perform in some, I believe it's 1045 steel. So let's try that out. So we did run the CNMG inserts in our lathe. It turned out very, very good. Uh, we ran it in some 304L stainless, but it is kind of difficult to see when we're running with coolant. So the more important thing I want to show you is the high feed cutter. Now we ran this in some 1045 steel. We're doing these big blocks for a customer. Um, you can see that this thing is just absolutely hogging through. We didn't have the, uh, the micro lift set quite right. That was a programming error on our part. But it didn't really matter because we're just hogging out a ton of material really, really quick here. Again, you can see that we were actually running this dry. You can see the chips are coming off blue. That means all the chip, all the heat is coming off in the chip. You know, it's not staying in the part. It's not heating up the cutter, which is what we want. So we ran the whole one side of this part here. Uh, it turned out just fine. And then we ran the other side of this part. And you can see the smoke on that part is actually just from oil left on the part from a previous machining operation. That's just the chip basically heating up and taking that oil with it. You can hear there is some deflection or some chatter in that, but that is because we are milling with such a large overhang there. Um, for what we're doing, it didn't matter because this is just hogging it off. But in the future, we'd probably put a screw jack in there just to make sure that everything was uh, supported well. So there you have it, guys. I hope this has been helpful. Um, thank you very much to TechMet for letting us check this out and give these tools a run. Um, I absolutely love it so far. It seems like these are working really well. We're going to keep running them and see how their tool life is, see how their finishes are. Um, you know, as you noticed with that, uh, that big steel block, we had a lot of hangout. We had a lot of overhangs. We had milled out half the part and then milled the other half. So I'm excited to see how these work when I actually have them in a more stable position as well because you know, for high feed tooling like this, we're not trying to get the best finish right away. We're trying to rough out a lot of material very quickly. And that performed extremely well for that. Um, you know, the chips are coming off blue, all the heat's coming off in the chip. Happy with it. In terms of the turning inserts, uh, what more can you say? They worked perfectly. We didn't end up blowing them up. So we're going to keep running them through production and seeing how their tool life is. Because so far, this looks like a great option. The other thing I'd like to point out, guys, is I know that you can buy certain tooling online, you know, if you've gone to eBay or if you've gone to Amazon. The one thing I really like about TechMet is that you know what you're getting. Um, there's a huge problem with counterfeit carbide out there where something will be marketed as brand X on eBay. Turns out that's just some generic package that they slapped a sticker on for that brand. So this way, not only are you getting the advantage of online ordering, but you know exactly what you're going to get, and you can just reorder it as you need it. There's no playing the game of trying to chase a deal in order to get a whole bunch in because it's a good deal. It looks like it's pretty much always a good deal. So I highly recommend you guys check it out. Let us know in the comments below. Have you used TechMet Carbide? Um, have you used the website? Is this something that's interesting to you? I'd love to know in the comments below. As always, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below to make sure you never miss a video. Thank you very much for watching, guys. You take care.